Hi there, I'm Vicky Parfano from Aussie Stampers and Vicky Parfano Studio. Today this is going to be a video about turning your art into greeting cards. It's going to be quite an in-depth video which will go into how you can turn something like gel prints or neurographic prints or abstract art into greeting cards. And I have been teaching card making for well over 10 years now and I've come up with some really good tips, but I've also come up with some of the stumbling blocks that people find when they're first starting out making cards. So the first thing you'll need is two pieces of white card stock. If you're going to work with something about A4 size, uh, my original art piece is a little bit smaller than A4. So you can see I'm just cutting off two strips there. If you didn't have one of these paper trimmers, then you could just use scissors and a ruler. But now I have two pieces of cardstock the same size as my art piece. And I'm planning on making four cards. So I'm going to divide this gel printed piece of neurographic art into four equal pieces. So if you're measuring and you're finding it hard to figure out the halfway point, my tip is always turn your ruler over. Sometimes it's easier to figure out the halfway point with the inches versus the centimetres. And you'll see me measure twice and cut once. The old standby rule. So now I'm happy with my measurement. I'm drawing a line down there. I'm just checking again. Yes, both sides are exactly the same measurement. So that is the halfway point. So before you commit to chopping up your lovely art, make sure you have measured correctly. Now I'm just going to use some long scissors to cut this line. It's fairly simple to do. Or you could use one of these trimmers. So again, I want to measure twice and cut once. So I myself, when I first started card making, made a lot of mistakes with measuring where I might just be a small amount off centre, but then that would mean that the shapes didn't match up. So make sure you spend a little bit of time getting the measurements right. That's a tip that I have for you to save some heartache later on. Now you can see how all of those four pieces can make card fronts on this single piece of cardstock that is now the same size, but I'm going to cut this piece in half. So this is going to give me two insides for the cards. So two card shapes or two card templates by cutting them in half. Now I have a bone folder, but if you don't have a bone folder, you could for this next step, use the handle of some scissors. And I want to show you how you burnish the fold so that you can get a nice folded card front. It can be landscape or portrait the orientation of these cards, depending on what stamping you're going to do inside of them. This is a stamp set from Stampin' Up! called Healing Hugs, and it's a rubber stamp. I've mounted it on a clear acrylic block so that it can stamp in one go by using two different stamps, but lining them up. Now this is Stampin' Up! ink, it's a watercolour ink. The colour is Elegant Eggplant. Now, this is how the ink pad opens. You want to make sure it clicks. And I'm taking the ink pad to the stamp. Now, this is one method of inking up your stamps. You can see I'm tap, tap, tapping on top, keeping it very level. I want to ensure that none of the ink has smeared onto the edges of the stamp, which could then stamp onto the page and I'm going to stamp it down. And I'm going to do this just a little bit off center because I want to show you an easy fix. So that if you make some mistakes here and there, this is, can be very frustrating in card making where you think, oh, I've just made it a little bit too crooked or it hasn't stamped well, but I haven't adhered that front piece yet. And that gives me another shot at correcting that piece that has been stamped not quite straight. So you can see if I stick the front over it, then I've still got the inside available for stamping. So I'll show you how I'll do that again. This time, I'm going to re-stamp it, lining it up perfectly so that it's nice and straight this time. 
so that I know I get a good impression and it's stamped straight. Now the ink on this will be a little bit wet after you've finished stamping so you don't want to close up the cover you want to keep it open so that the ink doesn't transfer onto the other side of the paper so give it a chance to dry before you glue on the front now i'm using a liquid glue this is tombow multi glue and it's my favorite it's my go-to you can see that I give it a shake. Now I don't squeeze the tube. I just allow a small amount of this to come out. One of the common mistakes I see people make with this is that they smush too much glue on and then it is very hard to work with. I'm just putting tiny dabs of glue here and there on the card front. And I've allowed that stamping to dry on the inside and I'm going to adhere this over that misstamped section. Figure out which way you want it to go so that you know it's the way you like the best. I'm going to place it onto the card and it's liquid and it can move ever so slightly around. So what I'm doing is I'm adhering it right to the edges and the corners and giving it a little bit of a wiggle so that it is completely straight and level. I'm checking on the back, checking on the front and that's perfectly adhered. Now you can see there's a little bit of an edge there. I'm not going to attempt to clean that up yet because it's still wet. So when it's completely dry, I can clean that up. So I'll put that aside for now, waiting for that to dry before I trim down those edges. And here we go again with this burnishing process. So this is smooth white cardstock I'm using for all of the inner pieces of the card. You can buy these in packets usually of between 20 and 40 sheets is the least um, expensive way of buying them if you buy a large packet of them. Here I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to show you how to correct when you have misfolded. This is a very common problem but it's easy to fix. So you can hold those edges again and come back in and reburnish. And this is the way you can do it if you don't have a bone folder. This little tip with scissors is you pat, 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 pat with the edge of the scissors. You have reburnished that line. And you can even come back a second time if it's still not 100% right. You can keep fussing at this quite a little bit. It's important that you do have nice neat edges because it just helps the card fold better, but it also gives a better, more professional look. So I'm taking that away and cleaning my stamp off with some stamping mist. Just spraying that on and wiping the remaining ink off with a paper towel, popping it away in its case. And now I'm getting out the next stamp. This is a photopolymer stamp by My Favourite Things. When you're buying stamps, I recommend you start with some pretty generic greetings you know happy birthday thanks thinking of you get well all those sorts of things are great now this comes in a plastic case and I'm going to now adhere it to the block and it looks initially like it's straight you might think oh yeah that looks straight enough but then you think no it's not quite right it's maybe a little bit down on the left or down on the right Oh, am I happy with it? Is it going to stamp straight? Very hard to tell doing it this way. So there is a good technique to help you get your photopolymer stamps fully aligned on the block because you can see through them. All you'll need is something with a grid on it. So if you had some grid paper, or in this case, it's my trimmer that has a grid on it, I can see that that's nowhere near straight. Even though it looked straight when I was having a look earlier on, you can see that now that's fixed it right up. So again, sometimes it's worth just paying extra attention to making sure your stamp is completely straight on the block and that will save any hassles later on. Now this time I'm going to stamp onto the ink pad directly. I'm not going to rock it back and forth. If I do that, I'm going to get ink all over the edges of the block and that will look absolutely ruined when I put it to the page. So you want to be careful that the edges of the block are free of ink as well. That's looking pretty good. Bringing in my card and stamping it. 
Now, another tip for stamping and getting a really good image is to use a mouse mat as a little bit of a stamping cushion underneath your card. I'm not using that today because I wanted to show you some of the ways people generally make little boo-boos on their cards. So that's come out really quite nicely. I'm quite happy with that. But if you were not happy with how the stamping turned out, you can use a blending pen. Now this blending pen is full of clear blending fluid and the tip is to take it to your stamp, not to your ink pad. If you were to pick this up from your ink pad, you'd end up with a very heavy dark line. So collecting this ink from your stamp and then dabbing it onto the stamp where it needs to go is a much better way to just completely colour in any of those areas. Now, none of this is necessary or essential, but if you're a bit of a stickler for getting a perfect image, this is the way to do it. Now, when you're finished, you need to clean off that blending pen on some scrap paper. And you can see I'm rotating that nib around, moving the paper around. You can see there's quite a lot of ink on there. Now, if I was to put that away with the ink on it, then the next time I use that pen, it would be contaminated with that ink. So this way I can use that pen on any color and it will do the job perfectly. Right, so there's another little tip for you. So again, I'm going to use my stamping mist and clean that off, take it off the acrylic block and pop it back inside its case and in the packet that it comes from. So if I was going to use a similar stamp again, I would know the brand, the company that it comes from. It's safe and secure in its plastic case. It will be secure from dust and dirt. And there's the happy birthday image. Now it might still be a little bit wet. That's another problem that I sometimes see is that people will fold up the card when the ink's still wet. Here I'm using a different way of adhering the front of the artwork to the card. This is double-sided tape by the company Express It. You can buy different versions of this tape from the dollar store as well, but I find the Express It tape is one of my favorites. Now you only need to put tape on top and bottom. You could put tape on all four edges, but I'll show you why that's possibly not a good idea just coming up. So I'm tearing that tape. I'm making it longer than I want it to be because the most important part of getting a nice cover adhered to your cards is to pay attention to the four edges, the four corners. So now I'm bringing in my paper snips. These are small detail scissors. They're great for cutting out any really small detailed images for fussy cutting images, but they're also good for this little technique here of just cutting the edges of the tape off so they're level with the front of the card. Just pop those off the table and out of the way. And I use the scissors to start the tear on the top of the tape. So you can see me popping the edge of the scissors under there just to get the tape started. So I've got two pieces of tape exposed and I'm going to put this on the front of the card. Now it's difficult to get a perfect lining up with this the first time you do it. You can get pretty close, but I'm going to show you what happens if I feel that it's not 100% straight. So I'm just adhering it gently, not too firmly and checking to have a look at it and think, is it straight? And I'm thinking, hmm, I think I could probably do better than that. And you get a second go at it usually. If you haven't adhered it too firmly, you get a chance to pull it off and start again. So this time I've got a second go at putting this card front on, taking my time with it, getting the corners lined up. And this time I'm much happier with that result. So again, there's a little bit of white showing. I can bring in those paper snips that can do detailed cutting and I can just shave off with the scissors the tiniest hair's breadth of paper along that edge. And I won't go the whole way. I don't need to go the whole way. I can just go to the fold line here. Sorry, that's a little bit off camera. But you can see I've just, just taken a sliver 
of the white off with those little detail scissors. So that's a perfectly stamped, perfectly glued card. All right, now for the next one. This is the third card coming in. And those same ideas of burnishing, getting it right, getting the folds right and refolding if you need to. Don't accept if it's not folded completely because then your final card's not going to look so good. Make sure those edges are perfectly squared off. Fold it back on itself if you need to and that helps the fibres break down a little bit more so it's easier to open and close. Here's another rubber stamp set. This one is quite large and a very detailed stamp. This is from the stamp set Seasonally Scattered by Stampin' Up. So I'm bringing back my big block. You can see if I lay it this way, it's too big for a portrait style card. So now I'm going to orient my card to landscape in order to fit that large stamp on the inside. Now I'm bringing the ink pad to this large stamp and this is the way I prefer to ink up the larger stamps because there's a very detailed image, there's a lot to get stamped and I'm going to go over and over just to make sure that all the ink that needs to be in that very detailed image has been transferred to the rubber stamp itself. So all these techniques are helping make you a more successful stamper and card maker. The other thing that I find is really important when you're making cards is be careful not to get ink on your hands because if you have wet ink on your hands and then you take it to your beautiful pristine card, you're going to leave a nasty ink blot. So you will get inky fingers, but as long as the ink is dry, Always have a cloth by your side or a wet wipe there so that you can dry off any ink that does get in your hands and that will help. The other thing that's important to do is make sure you're not stamping upside down. That's another common error that I see where someone will take the stamp to the card and they've stamped it upside down. And of course, once you've done that, you really have to start from scratch and do the card all over again. There's not much you can do to, to fix that problem. But this time it's reading the right way, which is good. And I can see that there's some areas where it's quite dark on the left and it's quite light on the right. Now, if I had been using a mouse mat or a stamping um, pad underneath this, which is like a very much like a mouse mat, then that would have inked much more evenly. But I can fix that by bringing in that blender pen, taking the blender pen to the ink not the ink pad, but the ink on the stamp and filling in where there are some lighter areas. And sometimes it's just little things like this that can take your card to the level where it looks really finished and really well put together. And it's just worth taking that little bit of effort sometimes to go that extra mile and get it done properly. So again, I'm going to clean that off before I put the top of the blender pen on just make it nice and clean so if I was to use it again on a different colored ink pad it won't contaminate the colors now I'm not going to close that on itself because that ink is still wet so I very gently placed it over while it's still open giving it a bit more of a chance to dry while I put the glue on that front piece and again see which side you like up which side you like down and then when you're ready, commit. So I hope you're finding all of these tips helpful. I know there can be a lot of frustration when you first start card making and it can look so simple when people are, you know, making videos and putting them into fast forward and making it look as though there's no effort at all. But there are some common mistakes that are really easy to avoid to help you have a successful experience as a card maker. Now for the fourth and final card, again, I'm going to clean up the stamp, put it back in its case. You can see there's a whole stack of detailed stamps there. They're lovely. And I like this stamp set. This has a lot of generic sort of greetings on it. It's by American Crafts and it's by Kelly Creates. And they're all really useful greetings. So this is another poly uh, photopolymer stamp. And I'm going to use a smaller block this time. 
I recommend when you start um, collecting stamps and blocks, there are a lot of places where you can buy these things secondhand or used. Um, places like Kmart can be great for getting you started on some basic uh, materials and equipment while you're still learning. But I find that you don't need every size of block. You need a large block for the large stamps. You need a medium block for the small to medium size stamps. And that's about it. If you don't have a bone folder, as I said, you can use the handle of some scissors. So it doesn't have to be something where you're buying a whole lot of equipment that you're not necessarily going to need. So this stamp, I really like the script on this. It's a really pretty little script that I was drawn to and I thought I like that and I like the fact that all of the stamps in that set have the same script. So you can see I'm tapping and I'm going to check on the edges that I haven't rocked the stamp on the ink pad and got some of the ink transferred. Now I'm going to press it really hard to show you you can see the imprint in the pad and if you can see the imprint in the pad it means you have managed to get ink on every part of that stamp. Okay ready to commit. So it's up the right way. I'm moving everything else away. Make sure you have plenty of room to do this stamping because you need to stamp level. You need to not have wet ink pads in the way or pieces of paper underneath you. You need to have a clear working space for successful inking and stamping. And that's perfect. Really lovely. I'm going to clean that off with my stamp cleaner. Or if you don't have a stamp cleaner, you can just use a soft, wet cloth. And now I'm going to return it back into its container here, which is two sheets of acetate, front and back, and a case to put it in, which is just a piece of plastic bag. And that keeps the dust and the grit from getting onto your stamps. The stamp is clean. And now I'm going to show you a little bit about the ink pads, how they work. There are different ink pads, different methods of using them. Some just have a lid that opens and shuts. This one, there are three dots on the front. You press with your thumb and you slide it open and click it open. That's the Stampin' Up! pads. And I think the Close to My Heart pads are similar as well. Now I have some ink on my hands. I don't want to touch my cards because I've been touching the ink, so I wipe off my hands. Oh, a wet cloth is good for that or a baby wipe. Again, I'm not closing that card because I don't want the ink to transfer onto the card and just using that multi-glue and the same process again. So I hope you found these tips useful. You can have a successful experience with stamping and using ink pads and stamping straight and not getting ink all over your pages. You can have a successful experience with getting neatly adhered covers. And I still have some um, trimming off to do on these couple of cards, which I'll do off camera because they're not still not quite, quite dry. Now you can see on this card, I have some misstamping here. And I have a fix for that that I want to show you. It's not really misstamping, it's just that there's a bit of a blot there. So this is a Sakura Jelly Roll pen in white. You can also get a Signo white gel pen, which is virtually the same sort of thing. Now this is a paint pen with a ballpoint tip. I'm starting it off to get the paint running. And because it's paint, you can't really draw with it. You're better off to actually dab, dab, dab at that little part that you want to clear up so that the ink is invisible in the middle. I think it might have been in the letter A that there was a little bit of a blur bit of ink. So I've just fixed that problem now by using that white gel pen. That's another great tool to have as a card maker to help with those little fixes. So there's the cards done. Uh, this is a much longer video than the other video I did on the Neurographic Art Cards. I think that one only goes for about five minutes and it's really a shortened version of this. But I hope I was able to give you some tips to help you with any of the frustrations you may be having or any of the 
um, points that you wanted to have cleared up about what should I buy, what is it that I need, how do I use these things and how do I get started making really pretty cards with my works of art. So I hope you enjoyed that today. You can find me on Instagram at Vicky Parfino.